Greetings. Today I'm going to talk to you about parasitic draw. This video is a continuation of the last video where I talked about a short circuit detector and I talked about the blown fuse situation. Parasitic draw is a little different. It's a situation where the automotive short circuit is low enough amperage that it doesn't blow a fuse, but rather it presents as a dead battery. So the typical situation is that you wake up in the morning and um, trying to start the car and it won't start because the battery seems to be dead. And so you boost the battery and it uh, works fine. And you take the car out to work. Uh, you may stop it and restart it later that day, but when you let it sit for overnight or for a day or two, all of a sudden it won't start again. What's the problem? Of course, the first question that you think of is that you, you must have left an interior light on. But you get inside the cab and realize there are no lights left on. Eventually you come to the decision it must be a battery problem and so you go on to test the battery. But the battery turns out to be good. So at this point most of us would wonder about a parasitic drain. A parasitic drain is a constant small amperage drain on the battery even when the ignition key is off and so it can't occur distal to any switch that would be turned off if, when the ignition key is taken out. And of course it has to have enough resistance in the circuit to prevent excessive current from overloading a fuse. As a first effort, I usually put an induction ammeter onto the output uh, wires from the battery to try and get a sense as to the current draw that I'm looking at. And the main reason I use the induction ammeter here is because I don't want to overload the fuse with, uh, of my ammeter with excessive current. And so you can see here that I'm drawing about 1.3 amps just in the resting seat in this vehicle. And as it turns out, this is actually a normal draw here because I've got the hood light uh, turned on with the hood being open. Watch what happens when I pull the hood shut. All right, my draw drops to about 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 amps. Of course, an induction ammeter is not capable of giving accurate readings at such low levels, but what this tells me is that I'm in the ballpark of a normal draw for a normal vehicle. Well, what if an inductive ammeter is just not accurate enough? You have two options. You could use an inline series ammeter, or you could use a real nifty technique of an inline resistor, measure voltage drop across that resistor, and estimate amperage on that basis. I'll show you both techniques, but you don't need to do all of them. If you need more accurate assessment of amperage, you need to do it in line. And to do it in line, it means you have to take the battery out of the circuit. Now, I find the biggest problem with taking the battery off is that I have to reset my clock and I have to reset a lot of the programs within the car. And this is especially relevant in the newer cars. And so I happen to have a spare and already charged motorcycle battery that I use to keep the, the voltage on without having to turn it off. And that way I keep all of my uh, settings in my uh, automobile's computer and, and the uh, radio, etc. So what I'm going to do is effectively I'm going to boost this battery to here using the same technique they'd use with boosting a battery. So positive to positive and negative goes to the engine ground. And that way I can take this, the negative lead of the battery off without interrupting um, the engine's power. And so just like with boosting a battery, you don't put the other negative to the battery cable, rather you put it to uh, part of the chassis. In this case, I'm putting it onto the alternator, which is a good engine ground. So now I'm going to use a neat little trick espoused by a web presence by the novel is Scotty Kilmer. And Scotty recommends using a 1 ohm 10 watt resistor. So it's 1 ohm and 10 watt. And we're going to put this resistor in series and measure the voltage drop across this 1 ohm resistor. Now there's some mathematical reasons why 1 ohm is more convenient. You could use any size, but 1 ohm is more convenient, and I'll get into that in a minute. But let's put this into series and see what we come out with. So, hook up one end to the 
the negative. And to this negative. Now we can unhook the other uh, battery. All right, so we can conveniently measure current uh, through this electrical connection. Let's see what the voltage drop is across this one ohm resistor. Why does Scotty Kilmer insist on a one ohm resistor to evaluate current? You could use any resistor. Well, the answer is because of Ohm's law. E equals IR, if you remember back to high school physics. The voltage drop across a resistor is equal to the current times the ohms. So the voltage is not the 12 volt battery. The voltage drop is the difference between one side of that resistor and the other. If you have a 1 ohm resistor, then the voltage is going to be equal to the current. There's no math involved. What does this do? It gives us a direct reading of what's going across that resistor without having to worry about frying an ammeter. Now there is a caution here, and that is that the power consumption of the resistor is finite. So the commonly sold 1 ohm resistors have a 10 watt maximum. The power of, uh, rating on that resistor is 10 watts. So how much current can we safely put across that resistor? Well, power is equal to current times voltage. It's a 10 watt maximum, um, the product of current times voltage. But remember also that voltage and current are identical. And so 10 watts is equal to current times current, or voltage times voltage. Therefore, you take the square root of each side of that equation, you end up with a maximum of three amps that you can safely put across that resistor in continuous time. Now you could put more across that in a brief uh, few second moment but if you find that the current across that resistor is higher than three amps then remember that you could put that resistor at risk or worse you could risk causing a fire in the engine compartment and so you need to quickly assess current across that resistor and then take it out of the circuit if the current draws too high. So let me explain again how I've got this worked out. I've got my battery hooked up correctly to the positive side and to the negative side I've unhooked the battery to all of the rest of the car. In its place I've rewired the negative connection through the battery through this 1 ohm 10 watt resistor and then back through to the negative cables. And so effectively what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure a voltage drop across this 1 ohm 10 watt resistor. And because it's a 1 ohm resistor, it means that my voltage drop there in volts is equivalent to the amperage that's going across that resistor. And so in this case, I'm drawing about 1.3 amps through that um, uh, connection. Now, the majority of that is from a, a hood light, a light that's illuminating the engine compartment. So I'm going to pull the hood down. I don't know if you can see this, but I'll pull the head down and now the light is off and you can see what's happening is that the voltage drop now is about 0 0.38 or 380 milliamps that I'm getting there through that connection. Now that's still pretty high. Where is the rest of that energy going? In a typical engine you should draw about 50 milliamps not 380. So where is the rest of it going? Well um, the computer is still on in this vehicle. The truck was recently driven and so the computer is still on and so we need to wait for this computer to enter into a sleep mode and until it does the draw will be too high. Now that kind of draw uh, overnight would uh, create a dead battery and so the computer is going to go into a sleep mode all of a sudden the energy and drain will drop and we just have to wait for that to happen. That may take a little bit of time. We'll see how much time it takes in this particular engine. Stay tuned. Okay, so it's 20 minutes later and I've walked away and now I've come back. And uh, I'll focus in on the DVOM. And you can see my DVOM is, the output has dropped way down because the computer and the camera has uh, 
or the, pardon me, the computer in the uh, engine has settled down. Now I'm going to switch myself over to a more accurate uh, range of millivolts. And so we're drawing about 4.8 um, milliamps uh, of current now through that uh, one ohm resistor. It's a 4.8 millivolt drop, so that's well below the typical specifications. Typically, you're in the range of 50 or below, and so at 4.8, we're well within the acceptable range. So, of course, the other way of doing this is to use your DVOM in series with the battery. And so I've hooked it up a little differently, but it's really the same principle. We've got the negative side of the battery here hooked through my DVOM in series back to the negative side of the battery here. Make sure you don't go negative to positive or you'll, buying yourself, you'll be buying yourself a new uh, fuse for the DVOM. I've allowed enough time for the engine to settle down. And so what we've got is uh, about 3 to 4 milliamps of output through that DVOM. But that's well within specification, so we have no parasitic drain in this vehicle. Uh, the upper limit of normal for most vehicles is somewhere in the range of 50, maybe 60 milliamps. Uh, of drain in a resting battery, but remember also that you've got to have the uh, computer in the engine asleep and it takes about a half an hour or so for the engine to go to sleep before you can get an accurate reading. Once you verify that you've got a parasitic drain situation going on, then the next challenge and the most difficult one is to find out where it's coming from. Now, you might get lucky in the sense that you could have an accessory or some uh, add-on device that's uh, sucking power and you might go to those first or you might have something else in the car that directs you to the area of attention. But uh, very frequently you end up having to pull fuses and search for the circuit at hand. So you have your ammeter hooked up, pull a fuse, look back at the ammeter and see if the drain has disappeared. And by a process of, process of elimination, you end up with the circuit that's causing the problem. Once you identify the circuit that's involved, then you need some help to sort out um, when the circuit is running and when it's not. And so I use this little device, this short circuit detector that I showed how to make in my previous video. And so I put that in series uh, into the uh, circuit using the fuse uh, location panel. So here we are. Add this in here. Yes. There. And turn it on. So now I know I've got current running in that circuit. I leave this running, and then I trace my wires backward through the circuit to try and sort out the. Uh, area where I'm getting the problem. So I'll shake the wires, I'll disconnect at uh, various uh, junction uh, uh, places in the circuit and try and sort out where the, circuit, uh, the short circuit is coming from. In summary, parasitic drain is a constant low amperage drain on a battery even when the ignition key is off. For most vehicles any drain above 50 milliamps is abnormal but you need to allow time for the vehicle computer to go to sleep before accurately measuring drain. You need to document, divide, and conquer. You start by documenting drain. An induction ammeter is not usually accurate enough at low amperage levels. For better accuracy, reach for either an inline ammeter or do a voltage drop test across a 1 ohm 10 watt resistor. Then you need to divide to identify the culprit circuit, usually by pulling fuses to see where the drain is going. Finally, once the circuit is identified, use a wiring diagram and work backward along the circuit, opening convenient junction points to decide whether the problem is proximal or distal to the junction point. Thanks for watching.